you, Joe. How are you?
Welcome this morning. Thank you for joining us for our annual Memorial Day commemoration. At this time, I would like to uh, ask our command sergeant uh, for the fire department to call, uh, call us to attention to, for the presentation of fellows. Go, God! That's it! Whoop. Present! Oh! At this time, I request that the Brockton High School Band lead us in the National Anthem. Italian-American War veterans, George Cataldo, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you're not in uniform, please remove your hats. Please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This time, I would ask that uh, the Reverend William McCoy, Brockton Fire Chaplain, uh, lead us in prayer. Let us pray. On this day of remembrance, O Lord, we remember those who have gone before us, remembering no greater love than that laid down for love of others, a love for the greater good, your love for us, our love for each other, and love that embraces all the world and all its peoples. On this day of remembrance, O oh Lord, we give thanks for the men and women of our armed forces, for the sacrifices they've made and those they're making still, in our behalf and in behalf of freedom-loving people everywhere. On this day of remembrance, O oh Lord, we pray for those who bear the wounds of violence and war, physical, emotional, and spiritual wounds, for their courage and strength, and for the healing of your merciful love, we pray. On this day of remembrance, O oh Lord, we ask for your guidance in the ways that make for peace. Subdue those who strive for more of violence and war. Swords into plowshares may be our battle cry. Confirm our nation's soul in self-control, our liberty in law. We remember, we give thanks, we pray in your holy name. Amen. I think it's fitting at this time that we recognize the sacrifice of one of our young men, U.S. Army Ranger Etienne Murphy, who died in Syria a few days ago. His character and devotion to service are a true example to us, and we can be proud of the fact that he was formed to a large degree by the Brockton Public School System. Please take a moment to remember the sacrifice of this young man.
this time, I would like to introduce the Honorable Mayor of the City of Brockton, uh, Mr. Bill Carpenter. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Memorial Day observances. Uh, I want to thank all of you for being here this morning, particularly not under the best weather conditions we could have. Uh, special thanks to VFW Post 1046 uh, for their memorial services conducted in numerous locations across the city this morning. Uh, and a special welcome to the Feroli family. Uh, Marty Feroli will be honored as part of this morning's ceremony. Uh, Dave just mentioned, but I do believe that uh, as we're here this morning to, to remember, to thank, and to honor all of those who gave their lives in all of the wars defending this country, uh, that Memorial Day does hit particularly close to home for the city of Brockton this year. As uh, Dave mentioned, Army Ranger Etienne Murphy, uh, who lost his life a few days ago serving our country in Syria, and uh, he spent a good part of his uh, boyhood growing up here in the city of Brockton. So I think the city of Brockton, who's lost so many sons and daughters to all of the wars over the years, loses another son this week in Syria. And that should just remain a reminder to all of us of the, for the price that has been paid over and over and over so that we can assemble here in freedom today. Uh, it's a, a privilege to make a special introduction this morning uh, as we're going to have a proclamation uh, that's been issued by Governor Baker, uh, presented and read by Deborah Silva, who's a member of the Brockton High School Marching Band, Brockton High School student, and she's been selected as our ambassador to Project 351 at the request of Secretary Urena and Governor Baker to present a special proclamation this morning. Whereas while the nation, thank you, was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives, celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those who had fallen in the service of their country. Renamed Memorial Day, the last Monday in May is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died in all American wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives, so that their sacrifices serve as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charlie D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 29, 2017 to be Memorial Day. And urge all the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its observance. Given at the Executive Chamber in Boston this first day of May in the year 2017, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 241st, by His Excellency Charlie D. Baker, Lieutenant Governor of the, Con Governor of the Commonwealth, Karen E. Polito, Lieutenant Governor of the Commonwealth, and William Francis Galvin, Secretary of the Commonwealth. God save the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. this time, I would like to pay tribute to uh, a special veteran who uh, served the city of Brockton for many years. Uh, he was uh, superintendent of operations, Martin Marty Feroli, who died recently, last month, at the age of 91. Marty was a graduate of Brockton High School, class of 1943. He was a World War II U.S. Navy veteran. His discharge record shows he enlisted December 7, 1942. Uh, this was the same date that the unit he was assigned to was formed, the 77th U.S. Navy Construction Battalion. Marty was trained in Rhode Island and left with his entire unit for California, from which they spent a month at sea, arriving at Guadalcanal 
on 3 September 1943. The 77th Regiment was instrumental in constructing the U.S. Navy field, Henderson Field, on Guadalcanal. From that uh, canal, his battalion moved to Vela La Vela, Bougainville, and Emeral. These islands were the scene of some of the bloodiest battles of the South Pacific. An outstanding unit diary is available for people to read the story of this uh, unit under the U.S. Navy Construction Battalion website. He was a member of the 1st Ami Marine Division Association. He was also a life member of the DAV, the VFW, and Italian-American War veterans. He was a member of the Brockton Rotary Club, being a Paul Harris Award recipient. He was a dedicated parishioner of St. Edward's, which is now St. Edith Stein Church. Marty worked for the city of Brockton, retiring in 1988. After retirement, he worked at Snow and Jones, Cape Way Plumbing. He was a past president of both the Plymouth County War Waterworks Association and the City of Brockton Department Heads Association. At this time, I'd like to introduce his grandson, Marty Paroli, to say a few words about this wonderful man. Good morning. I didn't know that there would be this many people. So thank you for being here. First of all, thank you all, um, those of you who served and fought for our country, for those who gave their lives in service to our country. Um, we, all, we owe you a debt of gratitude that we can never really repay. And on behalf of our family, we'd like to thank you for honoring my grandfather, Marty Faroli, in this way, with this very special recognition. As a family, we're so proud of his service to our country during such a critical time in our nation's history. So thank you all for dedicating this time to him. Uh, when I was little, there was a picture of my grandfather in his Navy uniform uh, on the living room wall. And I was always a little confused because I knew he was Italian, but the picture was in a US Navy uniform. So I didn't understand how he was Italian, but fighting in Amer for America. And then I, you know, as I got older, I came to realize that he was an American. He was all American. He was fighting for our country. Um, but there was always a little confusion for me when I was little. I didn't quite understand um, how he could be Italian and, and be an American at the same time. Um, but I eventually came to understand that and realized how much he loved our country and what he did to um, protect us and fight for us. When the war did reach America, my grandfather tried to enlist a number of times, but because of his age, he wasn't able to. And um, he wanted to enlist not because he loved war, but because he loved peace. And he wanted to make sure that he could play his part in keeping our country at peace and, and safe. Uh, when he was finally able to enlist, he did so when he was 17, but he had to drop out of high school to do that. And he eventually did earn his GED proudly 60 years later. Um, and that was, I know that that was a great honor for him and something he's, he was extremely proud about. Growing up, I really didn't hear him talking much about the war, um, but I think he started to open up about it when the film Saving Private Ryan came out, and I, I understand that that affected a lot of um, men and women who served and did cause them to start opening up about their experiences. Um, so it was, it was so interesting to learn the part that he played uh, in the war. He was assigned to the 77th U.S. Navy Construction Battalion, serving under extremely difficult and dangerous conditions. Um, although he did try to make the most of the situations he was in, and he, he let us know that he had a monkey that he named Tojo after the then Prime Minister of Japan, and he would often use that monkey to antagonize some of the other um, soldiers there. Uh, at Guadalcanal, he defended the Henderson Field, the airport that uh, we took from Japan, helped rebuild it. And he spoke about the constant sniper fire that, that they were under and how he built his own um, bunker or foxhole. I'm not sure exactly what he called it. But he also said he would take the tracer rounds out of his uh, magazines so that he wouldn't be detected by the enemy. Um, he, he replaced the, replace, the tracer rounds with actual bullets. Um, at Vela, Vela, Vela La Vela, the tank landing ship that he was on was literally blown up from underneath him when it was bombed by the Japanese, and a number of men 
uh, on that landing craft did die, but he, my grandfather jumped overboard and um, was able to survive that. My grandfather did survive the war, obviously, but that wasn't without scars, and those scars remained the remainder of his life, and um, that was something he began to talk about in later years, about how the war really affected him. Um, when my grandfather did come home, he married my grandmother and raised a family, and he worked for the city of Brockton for 41 years, starting as a laborer and uh, retiring as a superintendent of the water department. Those who knew my grandfather knew him to be a funny, hardworking, and very fair man, and a faithful friend. Uh, as a family, we knew how much he loved us. He was a constant source of encouragement, humor, and insight. To conclude, I want to again thank every one of you as a family. We'd like to thank you. Thank you for those who served, those who died in service, those who currently serve, and thank you for dedicating this um, parade to my grandfather's memory. Um, thank you very much. At this time, uh, Mr. Farolia will accompany me in laying the wreath at the uh, American flag. BFW, render the salute. Order, arm. Fire squad, please render the salute. Fire. 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 Port, arms. About, face. Yeah, breathe, Dave. I'm... Nuclear, please sound tap. 